How does Klippel Trenowney syndrome affect the health triangle? Now, first of all, what does that even mean? But would it help you if I said angioosteohypertrophy syndrome, congenital dysplastic angiopathy, Klippel Trenowney disease, KTS? Probably not. I prefer to call it KT. And it's defined as a rare congenital vascular disorder with no known cause. So if you haven't heard of it, it's not surprising. Most people haven't. So in order to try to understand this thing called Klippel Trenowney something or another, I think it'd be a good place to start at the physical effects. There are three defining factors for KT. The first of those is port wine stains. And these affect the arm, leg, torso, and even face of a person with Klippel Trenani syndrome. What it is is a capillary malformation that causes a person's skin to be reddish, purplish, pinkish on certain parts of their body. The next symptom is excess growth of soft tissue and bones. All this means is that limbs affected by KT are oftentimes larger than those that are not. The next symptom is varicose veins. These are veins that are twisted and painful near the surface of the skin, and these put people with KT at a higher risk of blood clots. Klippel Trenowney syndrome is considered really rare because only every 1 in 100,000 people will be born with it. But the diagnosis is so difficult that only 2,500 people are currently on medical record. People often go undiagnosed until later in life. So now you know a little bit about the physical effects of Klippel Trenowney syndrome. But that's the thing, there's so little known. Now, you may be thinking there are three sides to the health triangle, so what about the other two? And honestly, I don't think I can tell you a whole lot about the mental and emotional and social aspects of KT other than people with it can have a hard time making friends, have low self-esteem, anxiety, and depression. Because I have never personally been through it. But I'd like to introduce you to someone who has. This is my brother John. He was diagnosed with KT when he was about two years old. He has it in his left arm. I chose to interview him for the next part because he knows about it. And unless we've been there, We'll never understand. John. John's had Klippel Trenani syndrome his whole life. And so I'm going to be asking him some questions about the mental and emotional aspects of Klippel Trenani syndrome. So, John, have you ever um, been treated differently because of Klippel Trenani syndrome? You know, other people have noticed that I have been, um, but personally, I don't notice it that much. I think it's mostly because I, it's always been that way. There are definitely things that are harder, um, but I can't really say that, you know, I know what it's like to be somebody that has had full use of both arms or doesn't have Klippel Trenani syndrome. So, I mean, I guess I've made... What kinds of things have been different for you? Can you give me an example? Um, yeah, one, one good example would be tying my shoes. Um, I never learned to tie my shoes um, until, until I was maybe, I don't know, 12 maybe, something like that. Um, everybody thought, oh, you know, he can't tie shoes, that takes two hands. So they never taught me the normal way to tie shoes. Um, they taught me these adaptive methods, the, you know, the one-handed, one-loop, whatever method. And, uh, and then one day I just decided, you know, it can't really be that hard to tie my shoes. Um, so I just tied them the normal way. and it, Worked out just fine. 
Obviously you don't have your arm anymore. Can right. you tell us anything about that? It was about ninth grade. Um, I decided to make the decision to have it amputated. Um, because having no arm would be better than having what I did have. Um, and I'd have to say it was the best decision I've ever made. Do you think you were you're treated any differently, like, when you had your arm and having it? Do you think people look at you differently? Um, I definitely think people look at me differently now. Um, as, you know, people look at me less now. Um, I got a few more looks back when I did have my arm, um, but now people sometimes don't even notice or some of my friends even forget that I am an amputee. What kind of advice would you have for other people who are going through what you've been through? Um, I guess I would say don't ever let it get you down. Um, there's really no reason to. Um, there's always things you know that I won't be able to do. Um, I won't be a professional basketball player. Um, you know I can't shovel the driveway in the winter or rake the leaves in the fall. Poor you. Poor, you know, bummer. Um, you know there's there's always the bright side, and that's what you have to focus on. Don't focus on what you can't do. Um, just make sure that nobody stops you from doing what you can do. What advice would you have for people that come across another person with a physical disability? Like sometimes people don't know how to react. How would you prefer they reacted? It's difficult on both sides because I don't always know how to react when somebody is, you know, offering me help when I don't need it or, you know, trying to maybe ignore me because they, you know, for some reason, people do that. It's different for everybody, but with me at least, um, if I need help, I'll be sure and ask. What advice would you give to another person with a physical disability that's experiencing like teasing or people being rude to them? Um, I'd have to say that the easiest way and the way that's worked for me um, to avoid that is just to be confident in yourself. Um, if people realize you aren't gonna, you know, if, if they aren't gonna get anywhere by making fun of you, um, they stop. Um, that's, that's the best way that I've found.